Alrighty, Tim. Back at it again. We're building our 40 foot container ship by, t or t container truck trailer by Tamaya. Um, we did the tear down in the last video to show you what was in the box and whatnot. So, this video we're going to do pages three and four, which is basically just steps one and two. Um, they're going to involve our frame rails. Uh, which are covered in blue film, I should have taken off. But that's alright. Take our frame rails, peel this blue film off. Like so, okay. And then starting with the left side, or right side, down. on my left, so the right side of the trailer's upside down on your left. Um, we start with these little guys here, which are uh, P2. Um, there's a P2 and a P3 and they're different. This is a P3 right here. If you see, when we set them up like this, they butt up evenly against each other. Right, so there's no gap. If you go like this, there's a flat portion right here which causes a gap. So just make sure you don't get them confused. Um, which I think I just nope, I'm good. So P3s, P2s, just set them aside. Um, so what you're just gonna do is you're gonna take your P3, which you can't see them in the instruction books. It goes P3, and then a P2, followed up immediately by a P3, and they cut, your front one is a P2. So it goes two, or no, three, two, so three here, Two followed up by three, which is not that one. This one's a three. See how they meet up, followed up by a two way out in the front. So let's just do the back one first. They're going to take a screw out of bag A. Um, it's screw number six in the lineup. It is a three by twelve mil Phillips self-tapping guy, and we just very carefully start it, and then get our second one in. And just screw it down nice and tight. Careful, don't go overboard. Don't use a drill or nothing of the sorts because you could potentially strip it. And then make sure you're flush right here with your trailer and right here with your trailer for looks. Um, so just make sure you're flush on both ends. Give it a nice tight screw. Okay. Now, to find the location of our other two brackets, these guys here, on our frame rail, we just look at our picture, it shows that there's four flat on this piece, which is right here, four grouped flat, that means these four holes here are going to be our attachment point for this next one, which is going to be a number two. If you ever get confused at what you're doing, 
in the picture, in our diagram, in our build diagram, let's see if I can make it so we can see this. You can see right here in this picture that line. That line represents the brake where it, it hooks to the right. So, so when we're looking at this, that line represents this portion right here. It's going to be kind of hard to see, and I apologize, right here where it breaks and changes to our angle. See, just, uh, that's what that line represents. So if you get confused, just look at the line, make sure your lines are all uh, set up properly, and then it's just flat side down onto the deck. So, get our screw started. Here. Okay, so we got our two screws started. And we're going to take our next one, which is um, P3. We're going to get that started too. So, oh, there goes that screw. Get that one started too. So that way we get them all evenly butted up against each other. As tight as possible. So, let's get that one nice and in. This one in. And I know you're going to be tempted to use a drill or something, but like I said, you just don't want to risk tearing these guys up. Okay, so it looks like they don't touch quite as tight as I thought they would. So let's just make sure we're flat here, because this is the portion our container is going to ride on. So it's very vital that we're flat here to get an adequate look for the trailer. Alrighty, so there's those two. Now our front one's a P2, and that just goes on the very, very front, flat up against there. So we'll just tighten that one on. Make sure we're flush. Get our second screw started before we get that overly tight. This is about the time your hand gets tired, so. I promise, just don't do the drill. Alrighty. It's one frame rail down, okay? I'll do the other one off camera. You don't need to see me do two sides. As much as I think it would be entertaining to make you sit through that video. I'm not going to do it. Um, right now we're going to go to building our shocks. And what we're going to do... Go ahead and open this up. They did not give us springs for our shocks this time. It's, it's O-rings. Um, on the last of my build, the King Hauler and the flatbed trailer, they give us springs. 
O rings this time, no big deal. So as you can see, I have everything laid out I'm going to be working with. I do that so that way I don't struggle to find something or um, risk missing a step because I don't have something out and I didn't catch that I didn't have it out and I just glazed over the step. So. Doesn't call for oil, doesn't call for anything, so it's really, really goofy in my opinion. I, I would assume you'd want to oil it, but they don't have us doing so. So anyway, it's our shock body, dampener body. Um, just some ball link ends. Uh, these ball link ends come out of... Um, D4, they come off part tree D4. The long screws are BA15, and there are uh, six of them. They don't tell me what length they are, so I can't pass that on. And then the O ring comes out of bag BA12. It's a 3 millimeter O ring. So, there you go. <laughs> One shock dampener down. I'll do one more real quick. So we take our dampener rod, put our O-ring on it, take our shock body, put the body in the or put the screw in the O-ring all the way through. Just use your screwdriver to gently seat it, like so. Grab your D4. Start it on that and just run it down. Hold it tight in your fingers. You can use a pair of pliers and new nose pliers. Don't stick anything in the hole to hold it. You can risk damaging the hole. So, if you put something in like this to hold it, you can risk damaging it. Um, you can see I have a little, little scab left over from the parts tree. I just cut those off with a razor blade. Um, we're going to put our top on, and we have two dampeners, which can allow us to move on to our next step, which is putting the dampeners on our cross brace. Our cross brace is D1, part street D, part number one, and we're going to have two of these spacer rings. Um, these little spacer ring things, like so. There's going to be two of them, one for each shock, uh, or dampener, sorry, dampener. They go through the dampener ring in the top. You then take a BA2, which is a 3 by 20 That goes through... I did that backwards. So the the spacer goes in. The screw goes through the opposite side of the spacer. Or opposite side of the shock. So you can see that the, the screw and then the spacer are on opposite sides of each other. That's because the screw won't come through the, the dampener and the spacer won't go through the dampener. So that gives us a good tight fit. And still allows the screw to or the dampener freely wiggle around there. So once we got that, we take D1, and it doesn't matter in which direction you do these, you just gotta make sure you're. Oh, wait, it does matter. Haha, <laughs> caught myself. So, on D1, you can see that these nubs stick out, and there's nothing on this side. Bring some light around so we can see. So, nothing here, and there's nubs here. So, they go through where the nub side is, so that way your dampener can freely spin around. But before we go doing that, we need to put a little Loctite on. A little 
Loctite. A little red Loctite. They want that thing permanent. So, the best way to do this is with the edge of a piece of wood or something and just brush a little on the threads. Don't take much going into the threads. And it doesn't matter where on the thread you put it, as long as it's not too low. Now we grab this round screw doodad and just tighten it on. The screw, I'll have to show you here in a second. So make it nice and tight, your Loctite will hold it in place. So this screw they give you has no ends on it, no no hex head to it. It's actually got so you can see those teeth right here that bite the plastic. And that's how it holds itself in place to tighten to the body. So where'd that damn thing go? We got our cross member and dampener. We'll do it one more. So we just take our dampener, our number BA2, which is our 3x20. Our, so our screw goes through our dampener, and then our spacer goes onto the screw. Uh, now would be a good time to do a little Loctite. You don't have to do it now, you can do it later. So we do that, go through our spacer like so. Our, 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 not our spacer, our cross member. Let's see. And then just tighten on that weird nut that grabs the plastic. So we just put it in. Give it a nice tight. Don't go too tight because you don't want to strip this guy out, which would just be horrible. Focus back up. There we go. So, screw, dampener, spacer, nub of our cross member, and then our nut, which is the nut with the teeth that is all goofy. So that's how that's done. Now we're going to build three more of those real quick so I'm like pause I'm gonna get my other side of the trailer built I'm gonna finish building these and then we'll meet the, we'll meet the two trailers together and we'll uh, see what our frame looks like as we're going together so I'm gonna pause and I'll be right back guys hold on alrighty guys we're back at it um, I was away roughly a half hour it was a lot of screws to put into place. So um, as you can see I've already got my frame rails attached to the um, yeah the frame separators. <laughs> it's been a long day I'm having a rough memory moment. Cross members. That's what I'm looking for. That's the word. Cross members. So at this point we're just going to attach the second frame um, you can see that with this cross member, all, all the shocks are on the back side of the trailer, all three of the shocks, and then with our front parts, you can see that right here, maybe you can't, there's a lip, and on this side there's not. Um, don't know if that's going to matter later. But it may, so there's the lip, you can see it. Don't know if it matters later. It may. I did it, just because the picture shows to do it. It's kind of hard to tell in the picture, like always. But, right in the corner, let's... Right in this corner right here... You can just barely make out the lip on both of them. Right here. 
that's how I knew the lip went forward. So, set the camera back down. I will real quickly attach a couple screws. Um, while I'm doing that, I just want to thank you guys for watching my video. And say, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I am really enjoying building these for you guys. And apparently you guys are enjoying watching them. So, just real quick. Put a screw in here. I'll do one more up front, and I'll do all the screws on my own leisure, because there is a ton of them. So we'll do one more up front so we can get the frame set up so you can see it together. Alright, that is a completed frame. All 34 inches of it. We'll set it down and we'll lift up and look at it. So that's it. In all its glory. So, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Um, Speedy Mex signing off.